chased him by the flood. But if I told my dad, he'd say, It's, it's all inside, inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The blood test. Yeah. Ha. Oh, here. Hi, Tom Thomas. Huh? What are you fighting with flies? No. Dad signed me up for a class. I'm starting to learn martial arts. Are you gonna fight like in the movies? What do you mean? I'm gonna star in the movies. I'm gonna play a superhero. Yeah! <laughs> He'd be a great windmill for sure. <laughs> Tom Thomas. Is first period free for you tomorrow? Yeah. Excellent. Then in the morning I can take you in for a blood test. A blood test? Why do I need that? To make sure that you're healthy for your martial arts class. And remember, don't eat anything before the test. Don't worry, it's just a little needle. A little what? Mom! And what if I take some other kind of sport, like chess, for instance? Then I don't need a blood test? What's up? Are you scared? No. Mwah. I'm proud of you. Dad never told me I need a blood test. It looks like our superhero's a little scared. I think I'd be too. Blood sounds scary. Nothing scary about it. A human body has a huge number of little tubes called blood vessels with blood flowing through them. The blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells, takes away carbon dioxide from them, and protects them from harmful microbes. To be sure if you're healthy or not, it's often necessary to have a blood test. The most accurate results come from blood that is taken from a vein. The sample is analyzed to see if everything is all right. And if not, the doctor will prescribe a treatment. You see, it's totally safe. And there's nothing scary about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, blood should only be drawn on an empty stomach. What's that mean? It means no eating before the test. And what happens if I eat? Well, then they won't take any blood from you. Hmm, that's an idea. What's an idea? Um, I got no idea. Okay, good night. You're really not scared at all? Mm-mm. For some reason, I don't believe him. Huh? Huh? Hey, what's going on? You're not allowed to eat! Give it back! Hmm. Oh, my mom's coming! <laughs> oh. Tom Thomas, did you forget? You're not allowed to eat now. Do I have to have this test? Go on, go get yourself ready. to go? All right, Tom Thomas, get up. It's time. Well, thanks a lot. And from now on, we're not friends. Making an accurate blood analysis is not a simple task. Originally, this work was done by people that would examine a drop of blood under a microscope. Today, in modern laboratories, technicians analyze blood with the help of smart analyzing machines. These machines can do the job much faster, and they don't make mistakes like people can. After you give some blood to be analyzed, the test tube is sent on a real journey to reach the laboratory for analysis. In the laboratory, it moves from one analyzer to another, each one of them examining a different part of your blood. Then, all of the data is put together, and that's it. The blood test is done. You can get an email when the report is ready and check the results online so you don't even have to go out to pick it up. Mm -hmm. 
pretty cool, huh? Thanks to you, we just lost our friend. It's because he was being a coward. And if it's my fault at all, it's only a little bit. Fixies! Are you here? We're here. Look what I've got! A certificate for bravery! You had the blood test! And you weren't scared? Uh-uh! Look! Way to go! So, are we friends again? Of course we are! All right! Then can you teach me a few of those moves? Yeah, sure! Wow! Yeah! The umbrella! Well, so why isn't it working? We'll figure it out, colleague. Let's start by disconnecting the hoist. Otherwise, you know... <laughs> ah, Tula, you're finally here. Where have you been? Looking for an umbrella. What? What do you need an umbrella for? Because it'll be pouring rain today. Where'd you get that idea? I heard it. You're leaving already? Yeah, I have to wash the car before I go in. Ah, then I'll take an umbrella to work. Hmm? <laughs> you know the omen, dear. Once you wash your car... It'll rain? <laughs> <gasps> oh! Todd Thomas's mother was just joking. You don't joke with omens. It's going to be raining for sure. But it's no big deal if you've got an umbrella. Umbrellas are an ancient invention. They're almost 3,000 years old. In China and Egypt, umbrellas were made out of leaves, feathers, and paper. Servants carried them over their kings to protect them from the hot sun. When umbrellas became fashionable in Europe, people started using them as cover from rain. The most convenient are folding umbrellas. Their design is simple. The edge of the fabric is attached to ribs. When you open an umbrella, the ribs spread out in all directions and stretch the fabric over your head. Automatic umbrellas can open very quickly. Just press the button and it pops right open, keeping your clothes dry as if there was no rain at all. An unopened umbrella can be used as a cane. And if the umbrella's handle is also collapsible, then it can be stored in a bag when it isn't needed. Well, hmm, the contacts are normal. And all of the wires are in place. Then what's the problem? I don't know. We're gonna have to test it. Tula, put away your umbrella. But the omen calls for rain. Ah, one omen doesn't count. Manipulator, get me a screwdriver. Understood. Executing. Oh, the manipulator's joints are creaking. See, that's an omen of rain, too. <laughs> it's an omen that it's time for a little oil. Want to help me? Just a sec. I'll help you. Well, so much for that, Omen. It's going to rain anyhow, I know it. Just take a look at those flowers drooping. Isn't that an omen? The reason that they're drooping is because Elisa is on vacation. And my colleague forgot to water that plant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll finish the repair and I'll water them, I promise. Ah! This is the reason that it broke. This damaged part has to be replaced. Come on and help me. I'll get a replacement from the warehouse. Fire's flying low, isn't he? <laughs> and what? When birds start flying really low to the ground. <laughs> Fire isn't a bird. But he's flying low, didn't you see? Tula, give me a sledgehammer, would you? And put away the umbrella already. Look, there isn't a cloud in the sky. That's because it's morning. You have to know this, Owen. When there's no clouds in the morning, then in the afternoon, it's sure to... We're standing inside with a roof over our head. It can't break! <laughs> Look, it's raining! You see? I told you so, and you didn't believe me.
at least I won't need to water the plants. You're right about that. Let's walk together. But how's the weather? Outside is sunny. A perfect day. But there's a superstition that comes to its fruition. With no umbrella, the rain will start to spread. With my umbrella, my sweet umbrella. See that? I'm just uh, training for school. You're the one that's doing all these twists and turns for fire. Hmm, me? It never even crossed my mind. No, like slow down. <sighs> Tula, why don't we go and play some chess? Don't you think that figure skating's beautiful? Turn me. Uh. How cool! <laughs> why did you yell like that? I just got a pair of tickets to see the one and only Vector. <gasps> Splendid! And who's going with you? Actually, I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet. What's there to think about? Just invite the most beautiful girl in our school, right? Yeah, not a bad idea, my friend. <laughs> Did you hear that? The most beautiful one will get invited. Well, I'm not even interested. And you know what? Neither am I. is full of beauty. There seems to be no end to the beautiful plants and animals and the gorgeous mountains, forests, and lakes. But even that's not enough for people. They create their own handmade beauty, too. Artists paint beautiful pictures. Composers write beautiful music. Architects create beautiful buildings. And fashion designers make beautiful clothes. Not even scientists stay out of it. They create beautiful ideas. These ideas can be the basis for the creation of new technologies that make people's lives better. Everyone has their own idea of what's beautiful. There are as many opinions as there are people. But everyone tries in their own way to be beautiful. Both people and fixies. Please help me, Tula. How can I become beautiful? Huh. I don't know. Go and ask Verda. Look at her. She's got it. What has she got? What's the most beautiful thing about her? Oh, well, her hairpin, her hairstyle. The green looks great on her. Green looks great. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, see you later. Hmm? Tula. Huh? What's your opinion? Fire, do you think he likes Simka? Looks like he does. Is it because she's a redhead? Orange. Hmm, now I get it. Well, is that close to her color? Not really. It needs more green. What makes a person really beautiful? Fancy clothing? Bright nail polish? Dyed hair? Those don't make you look your best. Here's a much more reliable recipe. First, wash off and comb your hair. See? You're looking more beautiful already. Now change those dirty and wrinkly clothes for clean ones. Huh? That's even more beautiful. And finally, if you eat less sweets and get plenty of exercise, then you'll surely become a handsome boy <laughs> or a gorgeous girl. Fire? What's up? Do you think you could get an autograph from Vector for me? You got it. I love his song so much. So do I. Especially that one that goes... Computer, 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 you are super. I play my computer and turn it up real loud. I play it all morning, all day, and through the nighttime. But no, 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 that's not allowed. <laughs> I had no idea you were such a fanatic. 
Chanel, I'm not gonna get you his autograph. Why won't you? Because you'll get it yourself. You know what I got? An extra ticket. <gasps> I thought you were gonna take the most beautiful girl. All of you are beautiful, and you're the most fun to be around. Let's go. Stop! Hang on! Oh, Simka? Or is it Verda? Where are you going? What do you mean, where? To the concert! <gasps> mm. <gasps> mm. Verda? No, Simka. Or vice versa. I'm so confused. Come on, Tula. Can't you recognize them? This one's Simka, that one's Verda. Let's go or we'll be late. Hmm. Blondes are always the lucky ones. Yeah. I guess we should have made our hair blonde like Tula's. The movie. He fakes left. He shoots. Ha! Class! And can you do it backwards? Yeah, sure. I wish Simka could see this. Why don't we make a movie for Simka about fire? We can use my fixie tub. It's got a camera. How come it's only for Simka? We'll make it for all of us. That's a great idea. I'll shoot the ball at the basket, and Nolik will do the filming. And what do we do? You can be whatever you want, like cheerleaders or the coaches. Yeah, a cheerleader. Help me in. Motion pictures, or movies, appeared more than 100 years ago after the invention of celluloid film. A movie is made up of a series of still photographs called frames. When you look at the frames quickly, one after another, the picture on the screen appears to move. It's hard to believe, but the first viewers got very scared when they saw a moving train on the screen. <laughs> At first, films were silent. Only later did people learn to make them with sound. And soon after that, people learned to make movies in full beautiful color. Movies aren't shot on film anymore. They're made with digital cameras. Today, almost all phones and tablets come with digital cameras inside of them. This makes it easy for just about anybody to make their own movie and share it with their friends. <laughs> Fire is the best. Ooh, he can shoot the best. Hey, I haven't turned the camera on yet. Get ready. Here we go. Yep. Fire is the best. Cut. I got it. Show me. Yep. Fire is the best. And where's the ball? It flew over there. That's not right. You have to see the ball flying in the picture. I got it. Get ready. Fire is the best. How was that? It worked. I got it. Fire is the best. And where am I? You're somewhere over there. And we aren't there. Why did you have us cheering? Nolik, you need to make sure we're all in the shot. Okay, I'll try. Shots and you do the filming. Fire can't even hit the basket. You try to hit the basket when everybody's bothering you. Oh, so it's our fault, hmm? Why don't you learn how to play? Are you fighting again? <laughs> We're shooting a film. Whoa! Can I see it? There's nothing for you to see. All I have is pieces. And not one is right. Don't worry. It's no problem. All it needs is editing. What does it need? <laughs> Movies are not usually shot all at once, just a piece at a time. And each of these pieces can be shot several times with the camera in different places. Then there's plenty to choose from. After you're done shooting, you can take all of the best shots and put them one after another to make your movie. This process is called editing. Editing allows us to make movies that show things that could be impossible to shoot all at once. Well, let's see. For this first shot, we've got this take over here. For the ball going in, we've got this one. 
And I like this one of me shooting. And don't forget to put in me and Tula. Of course not. So here's what we've got. Fire is the best footage. The film is super. Can I try to edit it? Yeah, go ahead. Now we have something to show to our teacher. And Digit, too. <laughs> and Papus and Masia. Look, I did my own editing in the movie. That's not true. It is so. With editing, it's just not fair, Nolik. Fire was able to put it in a hundred times without any editing. You sure didn't. Hey, guys, don't fight. Do you want me to teach you all the right way to shoot hoops? Yeah! All right, here we go. And shoot! Fire is the best. Oh, we can shoot the best. <laughs> the baby monitor. Oh, it's my old baby monitor. On. Check, check. Checking. One, two, three. Checking. It's working. Hmm. Why don't we give it to the Johnsons? They just had a baby the other day. Oh, uh -uh, this is mine. And I'm planning on using it. Aren't you a little too big for it? No, I'm not big at all. Well, I didn't realize that you're still a little boy. And a greedy one at that. They're never going to notice this. Hey, Fixies, are you here? We're here now. Why did you call us? I got to show you how I turned into a mind reader. I find that just a little hard to believe. OK, then I'll show you. I'll leave you alone, and then you'll hide this button wherever you want. Then I'll come back and find it. <laughs> you got it. So where's a good hiding place? Well, we got to think of one. Uh, right here, under the keyboard. Great! Go on, Nolik. Come on in. We're ready for you. And now, I'm going to read your thoughts. Here I go. Hm. You hit the button here. Look! Ta-da! He really does read minds. Oh, that was a lucky guess. Bet you can't do it again. Well, I bet you I can. We're gonna have to be sneakier. Verda, she's the most beautiful girl in our class. She knows it, too, and doesn't hesitate to use it. She can even be a bit sneaky. Like when she needs help with her homework, then Digit suddenly becomes her best friend. But if she doesn't want to carry her pack a mat, she'll say, Fire, please help me. You're just such a strong fixie. But all us boys like her just the same. Digit does, and Nolik does, and I guess I do too. Although, I really like Simka more. Or maybe Verda. Or both of them. I haven't decided yet. Verda can be difficult and even bossy sometimes. But one thing I know for sure, Verda's a good friend. A friend that'll always come help. Well, that is if she's able to pry herself away from the mirror. I think that we should throw it down into this pencil cup. But then we concentrate on another place. Hmm, that is good, but it won't work, Fixies. Come on in. Uh-huh. <laughs> hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. It's in here. Tidish? Simka, were you thinking about the cup? No, I swear. And my mind was blank. Then who did, huh? Hmm. Uh-huh. Tom Thomas, what do you say we go again? As many times as you want. I know how he's been doing all of this. It's a baby monitor. That's how we can hear what we're saying. I don't get it. A baby monitor helps parents watch over their babies. The system has two units that look like wireless telephones. The parents keep one of the units by their side and put the other one in the room where the baby is sleeping. 
If the baby suddenly wakes up and starts crying, the unit in the baby's room will pick up the sound and send it by radio waves to the parent's unit. Mom or Dad will hear the crying and go and comfort their child. And so he's listening to us now. This time I know what we should do. We'll hide it under the globe. Ooh! Go on! Hmm! Uh-huh! Aha! Uh -huh. huh? Where is it? If you read our minds, you'd find your button under the baby monitor. You tricked me! That's really not nice. And spying on us is nice, you think? I'm sorry, I just thought it'd be fun. Well, anyhow, Tom Thomas, you're too old for this thing. Unless, of course, you still need it. I'm not a baby. I was just, you know, checking it. I'll go and give it to Mom. Mom, I'm not greedy. About what? Let's give this monitor to the Johnsons. And this car is for their baby boy. Hmm, I don't think that baby's big enough yet for your car. So what? Soon he's gonna get bigger and become a big boy, right? Like me. The Crowbar. Everything's fine here, too. I wish something would break for a change. It's already been a week and nothing's broken in here. Stop worrying. Everything breaks at some point. Well, nothing seems to ever break inside of this house. That's because we take such good care of it. No, Masya, it's boring with no real work to do. We should move somewhere else. When Fixies graduate from school, they must choose the place where they want to work. Some will work at factories, and some on ships, and some in theaters, and some in hospitals, too. Fixies are needed everywhere. Now, Fixie families with children like to choose places that are a bit quieter. Usually, they'll settle inside of people's houses. It's not too noisy there, like in a factory, but there's still plenty of work to do. They need to check on appliances like computers, vacuum cleaners, telephones, irons, and washing machines. And Fixies always try their best. They just love being busy with work. And so, if there's nothing broken in the house, Fixie families will move to a new place where there's much more work to be done. Nolik, did you hear that? Uh, I don't want to move anywhere. But think about the kids, dear. They've got their school and friends here. Do you like this friend of theirs? A human kid playing with Fixie kids. You know as well as I that it's just not right. <sighs> All right, then. If nothing's broken down before the end of the day, that's all. We gotta move. Oh, no, I can't. Tom Thomas comes home the day after tomorrow, and we'd be gone by then. Pull yourself together. And I won't see him anymore at all? No, Nolik, I have an idea. What, what idea? If something happens to break down before the end of the day, then we're not moving. But what if nothing breaks? Calm down. We're gonna make sure of it. Suka, you're a genius. But how can we make sure of it? We're going to use a crowbar. A crowbar is powerful and simple. It's nothing more than a heavy metal bar with either sharp or flat ends. It can be very helpful for breaking through concrete or ice. It can also be used as a lever to root out a tree stump or move a boulder. If one end of the bar has a claw cut into it, then it's good for pulling out nails. Yes, sometimes the simplest tools are the most powerful ones. Do we have that tool? We've got our pack mat And it's got everything. Yay! In gadgets and devices, our work will never end. Appliances are fickle. They need a loyal friend. At morning, noon, and midnight of every single day. When there is an emergency, you know we're on our way. One, two, three. Inside will be. Wrong. Trim. 
stop. Whatever you break's gotta look like it broke all by itself. Oh, I gotcha. And second, you gotta break it in some way that can be fixed later. Did someone say something needs fixing? <clears throat> or am I hearing things? Papas, we just found out that the, uh, television's broken down. Are you sure? Yeah. And one of the keys on the keyboard is stuck. For real? For real. And the clock's not running either. Oh, ho! Masya, our life is getting back on the right track. Should we fix it? Yeah, what else? We are the Fixies! We live to keep on working, and work for us is fun. So we'll just keep on working, cause our work's never done. And deep inside of gadgets, if you look when it's dark, you might just see us face around like multicolored sparks. One, two, three. Tanish! Inside will be... Tanish! To fix what's wrong. Tanish! Till it runs strong. One, two, three. Tanish! Inside will be Tidish. all day and night. Tidish. We fix things right. Tidish. Tidish. Oh, that was a lot to do. You'd almost think that somebody broke it on purpose. Well, we didn't do it. It broke by itself. Yeah, this apartment still needs a lot of work. We shouldn't move anywhere. I like it here. So do I. It's the best. See, we don't need to go anywhere. The globe. Ready, set, go! <laughs> oh! Yay! Oh, oh. Again, I couldn't do it. I told you, there's just no way to hold on when the globe is turning that fast. But I know I can do it. Hmm. Give me that piece of rope there, would you? <sighs> now you can't throw me off. Spin it! Go on. Whoa! What you doing? Trying to learn a bit about the Earth's gravity? That's a globe, not the Earth. Well, a globe's a model of the Earth, isn't it? Hey, come on, Simka. The globe looks like a ball. But the Earth is flat. We walk on it. The Earth also looks like a ball. It's just a very, very big one. It's not true. If the Earth is really round like you say, then it would throw people right off of it, like the globe does to me. No, it's just that the Earth pulls everyone towards it. Are you sure? <laughs> the planet that we live on, the Earth, is a huge sphere. The Earth revolves around the Sun, and the Moon revolves around the Earth. Do you know why they don't fly away from each other? It's because of a force called gravity that pulls all objects towards each other. The heavier the object, the stronger its pull. That's why people, rocks, air, and water get pulled towards the Earth instead of floating up into space. Thanks to gravity, we are able to walk on the Earth. Why doesn't the globe pull on me like the Earth does? Because this globe is very light. Compared to the Earth, this globe is like millions of billions of times lighter. Compared to the Earth, we're specks of dust. He's right. Look, a speck of dust. It sticks to the globe like we stick to the Earth. Oh, come on. It's just because no one's turning it. But the Earth's spinning and we stick to it. What? I just don't believe you. There's just no way the Earth is spinning. You've really got no idea how the days all turn into the nights, do you? Do too. It's because the sun goes up and then sets. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Our sun's here and you're over there. On Earth. Is it dark, Nolik? It's dark. Then it's nighttime on your side. And here, it's day. All right. Now we'll turn the Earth. Hooray! Now it's daytime for me! And night for me over here! Ah! Oh, my side got dark again! And for me, it's a new day! All right, fine. You guys were right. I believe you. The Earth is spinning. <laughs> the Earth goes round and round like a tilted spinning top. And as it spins, the sun shines its light on whichever half of the Earth is facing it. And as the Earth makes one full turn, we watch how the night becomes day and the day becomes night again. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to make one full turn. But that's not all. 
the Earth is also traveling in space around the sun. It takes the Earth one year to make a full circle. As it goes along its way, the top and bottom of the Earth take turns being closer to the sun. That's because the Earth is tilted. When the top half is closer to the sun, it's summer there, while at the very same time on the bottom half, it is winter. And when it is winter on the top half, it is summer on the bottom. Nolik! Nolik, where are you? I'm not sure. Somewhere in Kazakhstan. The force of gravity is super strong around here. So go on, spin it! You're gonna fall off, Nolik. Don't worry, just do it! Go ahead and tilt it if you feel like it. Told ya! Ha! And you were sure I was gonna fall off this globe. That's strange. Nolik, come on over here. What for? You'll see in a second. I don't want to. You really don't want or you can't. Tom Thomas, take a look. <laughs> I get it. He stuck himself to the globe, didn't he? Yeah, with the chewing gum. Isn't it time to go? Uh-huh. And me! Well, what about me? Hey! Ah! Uh, you gotta help me! Don't leave me! Should we help him? It, but the pull of chewing gum is even stronger than the Earth's gravity. The team. The first period is almost over. Tom Thomas's team is leading to nothing. There's no getting around the difference in class. Simka, pass it to me. <sighs> <sighs> Nothing. And that's the end of the period. Time for the teams to take a break. This isn't a fair game. There's six of these guys and only two of us. Uh. Go ahead and call your classmates. I'll still outscore you. You sure about that? Uh-huh. Well, Tom Thomas, you asked for it. Young Fixies take classes and study just like human kids. But Fixie schools are quite a bit different than schools for people. To begin with, there are no more than ten students in a room. In Simka's class, for instance, there are six, and the children don't study in one place. On one day, the lesson could be inside a refrigerator, the next day in a computer, and the day after that in a vacuum cleaner. This is the best way for Fixies to learn all about them and put their new knowledge to the test. But the most important thing is that they have to learn to work as a team and help each other. Stronger Fixies helping weaker ones, and older Fixies helping younger ones. This is a must for Fixies, because appliances are so very big that if we didn't work as a team, we little Fixies could never get by. As the second period is about to begin, our full team comes to the ice! Huh? Introducing the engine of our class, my motor's roaring! And now the brains of our class, Digit! Okay, what's the score? Now here is the spirit of our class, Tula! Could I be our goalie? <laughs> and here she is, the face of our class, Verda! And oh, what a cute one. So you want to quit, Tom Thomas? I'm not afraid of you. I'm calculating the angle to use. Whoa! <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Pass it quick! Ugh. Quit sleeping! If you're gonna scream at me, I'm not going to play at all. Wow, that's some team you got there. Six <laughs> <laughs> nothing! Oh. It's a blowout! Now the intermission before the final period. We're missing something here. I can tell you what. You mean confidence? Uh, calculations? Elegance? I know speed. 
What's missing here's teamwork. Simka, you're right. It's one for all and all for one. Then here's what we're gonna do. We got it! Attack and check, don't lose control. A line change on the fly. The puck is zooming towards the goal to score and break the tie. It's one for all and all for one. Great teamwork is a must. Let's go and show them how it's done. This game was made for us. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Hockey's our game. get creamed like that. Cause you're by yourself here and we are a team. Team! The tin can. Well, what else goes? A flashlight. It's good to have when you're camping. Listen, Tom Thomas, just leave a little room for me in there. I'm good to have when you're camping too. I'll leave you some room. Just hide in there so Dad won't see you. And you can't tell Simka anything about me going with you. All right. And last on the list, a few cans of meat. Hi, Tom Thomas. Have you seen Nolik? No. Then who did I just hear you talking with? I, uh... I was just reading the label. Huh, where did Nolik run off to? Simka, do you know, um, how come these cans have no way to open them so you can taste what's inside? What do you mean? Don't you know what makes canned food special? It comes in a can. <laughs> about canned food is that it can get stored a long time without spoiling. You see, meat and vegetables spoil when harmful bacteria start multiplying inside of them. So, if you can get rid of the bad bacteria or stop them from getting into the food, the food will last a long time. That's why jars and cans are sealed very tightly. This stops harmful bacteria and air from getting inside and spoiling the food. Telling me that Nolik's not here, right? Another can I should take with me. There's something fishy happening here. Hey guys, my mom threw this can out a long time ago, but I hid it for later. I knew I'd use it someday. And who were you talking to when you said guys? Moi? Uh, you're here and I'm here, and that's two of us. Look at this great can I got. There's nothing great about it. Put it down on the floor. You see? What? Oh, it's crooked, and so what? So what? It's all swollen. And when it's like that, you know that inside the can, bad bacteria 
is growing and spoiling the food that's in there. It went bad? There's a way to check. On every single can, you can find the date it's good until. Sooner or later, even canned food will go bad. And of course, dairy foods like yogurt or milk can spoil in just a few days. When you buy food in the store, it's very important to always check the expiration date. The expiration date's the last day that it's safe to eat that food without worrying that it may have gone bad. You can find the expiration date on each box, jar, or can of food, so pay attention. And be very careful not to buy or eat any food after its expiration date has passed. And if you see that a can is swollen, throw it away immediately. If you eat it, your belly can swell up too. Unfortunately, when food spoils, it's impossible to unspoil it, and then even the fixies won't be able to help. Oh, my mom probably saw that this can went bad over a year ago. That's why she threw it into the trash. Right, shame on you for picking it out of there. You could have poisoned yourself and poisoned your dad as well. Yeah. And the other cans, are they swollen too? They're fine. Goodbye then. It's a shame I couldn't find Nolik around here. Papus wants to give him a brand new pack of mat as a present. To me? Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> I had a feeling you would try to sneak away in Tom Thomas's bag. You lied, that's not fair. And hiding, that's fair, right? Tom Thomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Great, then let's get going. Hooray! We're going camping. <sighs> I want to go camping, too. Don't worry, I'll go camping with you. Really? Really, really, really. To that house outside our window. See how huge it is? The zipper. Hey, Nolik, look. Why did Tom Thomas go to sleep like that? Maybe it was some kind of homework for one of his classes. Uh-huh, gym class homework. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. You're looking good. My parents just bought it for me. Isn't it a cool jacket? And what, you slept in it all night? Yeah, once I tried it on, I didn't want to take it off, and I fell asleep in it. Yeah, life's never boring with you around. Oh, I think the zipper got stuck. And so what? You can leave your coat on no problem. You're about to go to school, right? And you think I could sit in my class like this? How could I have broken the zipper? Don't worry, you haven't broken it. Not yet. Here is a simple zipper. It is made with two rows of small teeth that pass through a slider. The slider has two holes on the top and only one hole on the bottom. When we pull the slider up along the zipper, the teeth grab onto each other and the two rows join together into one. And zip! The zipper is closed. To open it, all you need to do is pull the slider in the opposite direction. Then the teeth will come apart. But on mine, they're stuck together. And now what? What do people do in the morning? Do what they do. Exercise. And I'll have time to think it over. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and, and then what about me? Uh, go exercise, too. One, two, three, and four. And one, one two, two, three. three. Four, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Simka, come on, think of something. I'm sweating already. Soon, okay? Go get washed up in the meantime. Whew. Do you think I could help you think? I think not. I think you'd be better off washing. How's it going, Tom Thomas? Didn't we think of anything yet? What? Didn't we think of anything yet? Gotcha! Nope, she hasn't thought of anything so far. <sighs> it's so hot. Just pretend you're a polar scientist. They always work in their parkas. And you know what? I'll be the penguin. 
Hey, where are you going? Uh, I can't take it anymore. All right, just sit right here and I'll try to find the problem. <laughs> You see? That polar scientist game's funny, huh? <laughs> That's not it. It's Simcoe. <laughs> She's tickling so hard. Stop squirming. And you stop tickling me. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's why it won't open all the way. It's only a piece of thread stuck in there. Pull the slider up. You can unzip it now! <sighs> Thanks so much. Here it is, a thread. That's what the whole problem was. You're kidding. So I've been sweating because of some piece of nothing? In technology, every little thing matters. I remember when scientists built one of the first computers around 60 years ago. It was a giant machine. It filled up several rooms and had more than a million parts. It was a technological wonder. But all of a sudden, this technological wonder went kaboom and broke, and no one understood why. The computer just stopped working, and that was that. The scientists were going crazy. They couldn't find the problem. Turns out that this huge computer broke because a little butterfly had flown inside the computer and got stuck in between some contacts. Yes, it's true. This huge machine went crazy because of a little butterfly. And that's how it goes. So you see, every little thing really does matter. Tom Thomas, breakfast is ready. What are you doing in your jacket? It's cause I was playing Polish scientist. Hmm. Simka, what took you so long to figure it out? I just, just thought it would be funny to see Tom Thomas do his exercises and brush his teeth in his coat, that's all. That was your plan? Well, yeah. Can I joke around a bit? <laughs> the pen. Not here either. Tom Thomas, are you looking for me? Huh. <gasps> No, for a red pen. I need it right now. What do you need it for? Here, look what my teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you going to do with a red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. What do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's. And then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See, no problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah, then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen. It's more like a pen knife. Look, the ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack a mat there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. Nah, that's not 
that is. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink, so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable. Except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. Is this the one? You're right. That's it. Don't you just see how awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, help us. What do you need the red pen for? Well, Tom Thomas and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, I wouldn't have helped you out. So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behave badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? The electric kettle. No, your chin was below the bar. Ooh, that's all. I can't do anymore. You weakling. You're the weakling. I'm not. I just haven't eaten in a while, and that's why I lost my strength. You're a slave to food, Tom. And you see, that's the difference between us fixies and you humans. Many people wrongly assume that the only way Fixies could live is by stealing food off of humans' tables. Or worse yet, by stealing it from their refrigerators. That's just a lie. It's not true at all. Fixies don't eat any kind of human food. So then where in the world do the Fixies get their energy, you're wondering? It's very simple. A Fixie's entire life is connected with devices. Fixies not only live inside of devices, but they take care of them and help them live longer. And in return for their help, these devices share part of their energy with the Fixies. So there you go. The Fixies help devices, and devices help the Fixies. Yes, we Fixies and machines have a symbiotic relationship. So we don't eat leftovers like cockroaches, because we're Fixies. One, two, three, whoa! How's it possible that a big boy like you doesn't know how to make any food for himself? I'm able to cook, but I'm not allowed to turn on the stove. What can you make without it? Oh, yes. We have instant oatmeal. Look. Do you like oatmeal? You're joking. Only my folks say oats are healthy and make you stronger. Great. Well, then how do you cook it? It's not hard. All you gotta do is add hot water, and I'm allowed to turn on the kettle. Stop and check if there's water in there. If there's none, you can burn out the kettle. It's got enough. Then you can turn it on. Hey, tell me, how does the kettle turn off? I mean, how does it know when the water's hot enough? 
of an electric kettle, there's a heater hidden underneath its bottom. When you turn on the kettle, the heater warms up the water until it boils. And the boiling water gives off steam that heats up a special metal plate at the top of the kettle. The heat causes the metal plate to bend and that turns off the switch. So you could say that an electric kettle feels when the water's boiling. Okay, now I understand. Hey, why do you need three bowls? You don't need to make any oatmeal for us. It's not for you guys. It's for my mom and dad. Start out here. No! Keep pouring into this one. And I say pour it here. And I say first you should pour it into mine. Oh, Nolik, where are you? I'll find him. Hang on, I'm going in. Ah! Simka! She was right over here. Ah! <sighs> Nolik! Over here. Simka! Here. Nolik! There. Hey, and what about your shoe? Don't worry, I got another one. Hi, Tom Thomas, we're back. You must be hungry. We'll make you something to eat. But I already prepared us some food. And the water's already hot. Wash your hands. Tom Thomas, don't touch that kettle if it's hot. I don't want you to burn yourself. Yum, 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 so yum. today we're eating oatmeal for dinner. Delicious. Uh, maybe you have something else? Why something else? You're the ones that say that oatmeal's great for you and that it makes us stronger. Well, yeah, that's what we say. I'm glad that our son pays such careful attention. Mmm, <laughs> isn't it delicious? Really? Huh, what's that? Oh, look, you found the boot, Dad. What? <laughs> uh, it's nothing. Just eat your food and don't get distracted. I'd like to see that oatmeal all gone, okay? And whoever doesn't finish won't get any candy. Mm.